Fatal drug overdoses are expected to break records in San Francisco this year with the powerful opioid fentanyl continuing to push the death toll higher and higher. Crown Force Maureen Kelly takes a closer look at the life-saving drug Narcan, which she used herself to save one man's life this week. If you don't give me a response, I'm going to end up having a Narcan. You know, I don't want to have to do that. Bill Buhlman is using his colleague at HealthRight 360 to give me a refresher course on how to administer Narcan or Naloxone, which can reverse the effects of an opioid overdose. I had a firsthand experience giving doses of the life-saving drug on Monday morning to a young man who had been non-responsive and turning blue on a corner of Potrero Hill as we waited for first responders you see in this video to arrive. If trying to rouse the potential OD victim verbally and then with a sternum rub fails, Buhlman then sticks the Narcan dispenser up a nostril. And then I want to give it a good press so as much of the medicine as possible gets up in there. Narcan comes in a two-dose box and it's recommended to wait two to three minutes before giving the second round if needed. But Buhlman says with the powerful opioid fentanyl, sometimes even just two sprays won't cut it. Because there aren't ill effects from mistakenly administering naloxone, it makes it very easy and safe to administer. Last year, the Department of Public Health, through community partners and other city agencies, including the fire department, gave out more than 60,000 doses and expects to give out even more this year. Our goal is to put this effective tool in the hands of people who can respond, who are often people themselves who use drugs, who themselves might be at risk for overdose, and this is a tool to help people take care of each other. You have to respond very quickly to a fentanyl overdose in comparison to a heroin overdose if you want to prevent a fatality. Buhlman himself has been on the receiving end of Narcan approximately seven times, including once at this hotel, before going into treatment in 1999 and turning his life around. Since then, he says he's lost track of how many times he's performed the life-saving act over the last 20 years in his work in harm reduction. Every single person who's using fentanyl is somebody wife, husband, daughter, sister, brother, and every life is worth saving. As he points out, dead people don't get a chance to change. Maureen Kelly, Cron4 News. Maureen's a hero. She really is. Thank you, Raina. Cron4's commitment to the Bay Area continues as we take you inside now one of the most controversial and divisive issues in our community, homelessness. Yeah, and we have a new Cron4 series with our reporter and San Francisco native Maureen Kelly, and she's taking us to the streets to show us this crisis from a new perspective with one goal, getting answers. I'm from San Francisco. I was born and raised here and I still live here. I see the homeless problem in this city every day and now you're going to see it too. Strap with this cell phone. I'm going to be giving you an up close look inside the crisis while I try to find out why it doesn't seem to be getting much better. You don't have to walk far in San Francisco to see it. People passed out on the pavement. Tents and garbage taking over the sidewalk. Certain streets jammed with rundown RVs. Even though I grew up in this city, there are places I don't feel safe getting out of the car to show you. This is recent video from Larkin Street in the Tenderloin. A sense of lawlessness just steps away from the federal courthouse. And while the problem with homelessness and drug use is not on every corner, you can't easily escape it. While walking on the Embarcadero, a man began shooting up right in front of me. If you live or work here, the attitudes towards homeless people vary. Help me. There's compassion. There's acceptance. Some are just fed up. I don't really know the best way to handle it, but what I, what I want to see is people who are violent and aggressive off the street. And while it's easy to blame horrific street scenes on the homeless, I'm learning it's a lot more complicated. That's because I'm not just shooting video, I'm also taking the time to listen. I'm a reporter with Channel 4. I just want to know if I can talk to you. Some say they were forced out. No, they're still on the property, so basically we had to get out. Some can't seem to find a way out. Are you trying to get any services? I tried, but they didn't really want to help me. They denied me. So Some tell me they just want to stay put. Most of the hotels they get a hold of are usually full of packs of tweakers, twacks, and a bunch of other people, and I don't like to yeah, be around them. See, this is your tattoo is like railroad, I think. Some say they're just passing through. 
For the past two years, we've been freight train riding. So now what? We've all seen the headlines that change is coming. $12 billion to support homeless. New program after new program. Is any of it a real reason for hope? It's time to find out. In the coming months, Cron 4 will be taking you inside the crisis in San Francisco, getting answers from city leaders, looking into the programs meant to help, and figure out what's actually working on the streets. But I can't do it alone. That's why we've started a tip line. If there's something I need to see or know to help understand this crisis, email me on the streets at cron4.com. Yeah. Maybe by looking at the problem from a different perspective, together we can make a difference. Reporting on the streets, I'm Maureen Kelly, Cron 4 News. Amazing. Wow. And that was right. just basically the tease mm -hmm. for this amazing series that Maureen's putting together. Yeah, our first wow. investigation broadcasts tonight at 10 p.m. Maureen will take us inside youth homelessness uh -huh. and tries to find out why not everybody's getting the help they need in San Francisco. I think she revisits with that one young man who was like, I was denied services. We're going to maybe find out a little more about him. And that's amazing. Right, way in. to go, Maureen. And way to go. I'm going to pat our back. Crown four. Yeah. I, I don't see anybody doing something like this. This nope. is, could make a difference. 10 p.m. Cool. tonight. Tune in. As part of our commitment to the Bay Area, we are taking you inside one of the most controversial issues in the community, homelessness. On any given night, there are more than 1,100 homeless youth in San Francisco. The question is, who are they and how did they end up there? Now, as part of a new Cron 4 series, reporter and San Francisco native Maureen Kelly takes us on the streets to try to get some answers. My journey to understand the homeless problem in San Francisco has led me to Fisherman's Wharf. What do you got here? No, um, just something to help me get help. Where I found a young man panhandling on the sidewalk with a stuffed animal under his arm. I like it. This is 25-year-old Corey Harris. Where it brings you here? Are you from San Francisco? I'm from San Diego, but coronavirus and the cleanup, I just moved away from it. I asked him how long he's been homeless, and he tells me pretty much his whole life. Just unfortunate, moving house to house, no real parents to care. You a foster child? Yeah, at one point, yes. What do you do for a shelter right now? Oh, I sleep outside. I have a sheet. And are you trying to get any services? I tried, but they didn't really want to help me. They denied me. Corey says the last place he went for help was Larkin Street Youth Services. So that's where I decided to go next and find out why it didn't work out for Corey. It turns out it could be because he's just a little too old to qualify for their help. They allowed me inside with my camera to one of the emergency shelters at Ellis Street on the edge of the Tenderloin, known as the Lark Inn. This one is reserved for youth aged 18 to 24. People who do qualify are given welcome kits with toiletries and sheets. Once inside, you're greeted by brightly colored murals with uplifting messages. While a sunny landscape cheers this hallway, the actual sleeping quarters are a bit bleak. Cement floors, spare furnishings, plastic bins and metal lockers store belongings. Right now, some beds are not being slept in because the pandemic has them running at only half capacity. Uh, my experience is there's a place to lay your head at night if you ain't got nothing else. That first-hand perspective comes from Larkin resident Dale Jones. I met the 22-year-old from Contra Costa County as he was hanging out inside the Larkin Street Youth Services Access Site on Golden Gate Avenue. Dale didn't want to go into details on how he ended up homeless in San Francisco, but describes what his life was like before he found a place at the shelter. In the past year before I got here, I lived at with like seven different family members, a couple of different houses in a hotel a couple of times and an Airbnb a couple of times. Now he tells me he's making the most of the resources available to him, checking in with his caseworker here once a week about getting a more permanent place to stay. I'm in the shelter right now, but I'm already on the waiting list for basically cheaper housing. They're going to help me pay. So just going through it. The vibe of the access site is more college student coffee shop than bureaucrats waiting room. Here those as young as 12 can drop in and grab hot meals, access laundry and showers, pick from a clothing closet, or get hygiene products. They can do arts and crafts or simply rest and charge their phones, like Dale did before going to the Job Corps program he's enrolled in. 
Dale says this place gives him a sense of security. It is that simple, a place to wake up and go to every day. Dale hopes to get help finding a job as a security guard and one day get his degree. I want to follow psychology and get a master's degree because I want to be a psychology teacher at the end of the day. There you go. All right. Larkin Street Youth Services says they are working towards ending youth homelessness, so it is rare, brief, and one time. Sherilyn Adams is the executive director. We know that about 50% of the folks that are experiencing homelessness who are over the age of 18 had their first experience between the ages of 18 and 25, right? So we know that the quicker we intervene with homelessness, we go a long ways towards preventing chronic homelessness. The other piece is that the longer you're outside, the more detrimental it is to your health and well-being. What's been going on with you since I saw you last? I've just been around surviving. While at the access site, I ran into a familiar face. Corey was there to take a shower and get some food, but the 25-year-old will likely have a harder time finding a place to sleep than he would have had just one year ago. We don't have a great system in San Francisco around 25 to 35-year-olds in general because the scan, the span of age, right, for people experiencing homelessness was, you know, 70, 75. And we prioritize folks based on length of time homeless right now. Meanwhile, Corey continues to try to get the help he needs. Had any luck finding any kind of housing? Yeah. Oh, I've been looking around. Um, no luck yet, though. Reporting on the streets, I'm Maureen Kelly, Cron 4 News. Larkin Street Youth Services would not confirm if they were assisting Corey in finding help, but they did say they are able to help those who enter the system before turning 25 receive housing assistance, such as rent subsidies, even after they turn 25. And they say they've housed more than 400 young people so far this year. Cron 4 will be continuing our commitment to investigate the situation on the streets, but we need your help too. If there's something you think Cron 4's Maureen Kelly needs to see or hear, you can email her. That's the address on your screen on the streets at cron4.com.